Hello, so let us start with the second question of chapter 9 from Goldstein Classical Mechanics and the question is show that the transformation for a system of one degree of freedom with capital Q as small q cos alpha and minus p sin alpha and capital P as small q sin alpha and p cos alpha so over here just for convention I have taken this as a capital Q and a capital P with under <coughs> underline as the P just to differentiate okay and then we have few sub questions that we have to check it for like wh what does it produce is for different types of alpha and what would be the generating function for such kind of transformation and what is the significance like physical significance of like the transformation that we have seen as given in the question so for the a part we have to show that yeah, so in the equation one over here i have written the given question that satisfies the symplectic condition we have to see if that satisfies the symplectic condition so by the equation two i have shown the symplectic condition so sim where m is the jacobian of variable q p Cap capital Q and capital Q P with respect to small u and small p. So this Jacobian is represented by this matrix. Alright. And once we do the calculation, we get our M as cos alpha minus sin alpha and sin alpha cos alpha. This is our M. And we have to see if our M is satisfied by the symplectic condition where j is a matrix it's a very special kind of matrix in uh, classical mechanics where it's the diagonal elements the real like the normal diagonal which we talk of they are uh, like zero and the other diagonal with, like, with these these are one and minus one all right now we put the values of m j and m transpose in equation two which gives us this particular thing and on further solving the left hand side we reach to a point where we see that m j and m transpose is equal to j so our symplectic conditions are satisfied which implies that the given transformation is canonical and uh, since we have not specified any constraint over alpha so this condition is satisfied for any general alpha all right so we have done with the first part now we have to find the generating function for such kind of transformation all right we'll move to the second part uh, in the gold scheme you will see a table where you will see that there are three four kind of generating functions so as of now we have taken the first type of generating function that is f of small q and capital Q is the function of small q and capital Q and then wherein we are we are where in the small p the small momenta is given by partial derivative of f of 1 with respect to small q and capital P is given by minus f of 1 by small q. Okay, now we write the small p and capital P in the terms of small q and q for the reason that we can further integrate this equation and find the proper delta function. Okay, now manipulating equations 1, we write the small p and capital P in terms of small q and capital Q and then we put the values of small p and capital P in equation 4 over here and then we proceed with the integration of partial so in the partial like when we have the derivative partial derivative then in the integration we have some function g of capital G so I am taking this condition over here so I have integrated and there will be some function of capital Q Alright, and similarly, 
while integrating this one, I get over here. I get this as a final condition. Now I am comparing equation 7 and equation 8. So, whatever the common part of them will be definitely be there in the f of 1 and something which are not common in both of them. So, see over here this term is not common and this term is not common. Alright. So, these are the two extra terms which are going to be there. This is the h of q and this is the g of capital Q. So these both are also going to be there in f of 1. Alright. So, as I have mentioned over here, the h of q and g of q. So, these are the two things. And finally, you can see the capital for generic function becomes half into small c square plus capital Q square cos alpha by sin alpha minus q into capital Q sin alpha. So, see, uh, as, I, as we have assumed that the generating function will be of type f of 1, which is purely based on the space coordinate, not the moment time. What final sign will we get? That our function is of only q and capital Q, generalized coordinate. Calling them space coordinates would not be uh, justice for them. Like we, we can call them generalized coordinates. Okay. Now uh, let's come to the next question, which like asks us what are the significance of such kind of transformation as mentioned as by the equation one. If our alpha becomes polar, when our alpha is zero. Alright. Now we put the value of this alpha in the generating function and we find the Jacobian. What kind of Jacobian we are getting? So the Jacobian we get when when we put alpha equals to zero is sort of this. So over here we can, we can come and see the Jacobian. We can put the value of alpha for cos we get one and for sine we get zero. Alright, and what is this? It's, it's a kind of identity transformation. You see, like exactly this will produce exactly what if my like the coordinates are small q and small c, after transformation my coordinates would be capital Q and capital Q. This can also be seen from if in equation one, if I put uh, alpha equals to zero, what I will get capital Q is a cap small c and capital Q is small c. So these two will get cancelled. Okay. So that's why it's said to be identical transformation. And when we put as, as uh, alpha as pi by 2, then our m is kind of 0 minus 1, 1 and 0. So this is nothing but an interchanging transformation wherein my, I can say that wherein my small q goes to become a capital P and my small q becomes minus of capital P or vice versa you can say or in other words you can say that minus Q goes to capital Q. Alright, so this is uh, what we term as the interchange transformation. Alright. And finally now since we saw like if, if my function or uh, what would be the kind of my transformation when we have two different angles alpha equals to 0 and pi by 2. Now we have to see does this gener generating function works for both? Okay, so we have this generating function over here. So will this work for both of the angles? So when I put alpha equals to 0, so over here so you can see that I get 1 by 0. Alright? And over here also I get so 1 by 0 is a kind of undetermined format which we usually learn in our high school. So the given generating function won't work in such cases. So we have to go with some kind of other generating functions, let's say f2 or f3 in that case. And when we put our alpha equals to pi by 2, my generating function reduces to minus q and capital Q. So since it's a valid transformation, it's a valid generating function, unlike the what we get for alpha equals to 0, the undetermined format. So f1 is a valid in case of pi by 2. So
so my generating function works for alpha equals to pi h so this is what we can conclude at the field so i guess this is what everything for the given question so thank you for watching the video